Today we're going to look at some of the more advanced features of the theme application, specifically around using the different metadata settings to not only create the metadata we can load into Virtual Data Warehouse, but also to test out some of the changes in the repository so we, that we can use to switch between a virtual and a physical representation of the data. In other words, we can use this setup to simulate what the target data warehouse will look like based on our design, design metadata, but we can also load that into a physical structure to act effectively as an ETL process and toggle between the two. We can then use that information to demonstrate some of the more complex structures such as time varying joints and things like that. So to be able to do that, I'm going to open up the team application, go to configuration, general settings, and then connections. And I'm going to make sure that the metadata repository type is set to SQL Server. The metadata repository type is mainly used to direct where the essential metadata is stored, so table mapping, attribute mapping, and physical model structures. However, in this version of Team, it is also used to generate a sample set, sample data, sample structures in this database, in a SQL Server database that we can then use to explain how the virtual and physical behaviors can be used. So to do that, I've created a couple of databases such as 000 source, staging area, persistent staging, integration layer, presentation layer, on my local SQL Server instance, and I'm going to create the sample data into those databases. It is also possible to use a single database or an Azure database. That all works pretty much the same way, but to explain the separation of behavior in the ETL, I'm just going to use specific separate databases. For this example, I'm going to completely rebuild a repository, a completely new environment, and I'm going to again generate the sample metadata. Because we have repository type SQL Server, it will also create all the structures in the databases. And you can see the big list of SQL statements that is executed in the background. If I'm going to go into my SQL Server database, in the different databases that have been set up, all these structures are now available. And I can look at the sample data that has been created as a result in my sample source, 000 source. What I'm going to do now is to go and generate the ETL to load all this information through these different steps of my data warehouse and see how we can create views from this also. To do that, I'm going to go back to the Manage Metadata screen. And in here, the sample metadata is again available. And I can choose between virtual and physical metadata activation options. The difference between those is that the virtual mode will look at the existing physical model snapshot as it exists in the metadata, or more precisely, in a version of the metadata. If we activate against a physical model, we can just map existing design metadata against what is available structure-wise in the target database. For this example, I could use either, but I'm going to use the physical model to directly establish a database connection and complete the mapping from there. Same process, activate metadata, does all the validation, does all the checks against, in this case, the physical model in SQL Server, and generates the JSON files that contain source target mappings. It is also possible, if I check this display JSON output, to either generate the JSON files specifically, or I can also right-click on a specific row and achieve the same result for a specific mapping. So all this information is then made available in the output directory. And as you can see, it contains a whole number of JSON files that have been just generated by the application. What I'm going to do then is open Virtual Data Warehouse. And because the input directory for Virtual Data Warehouse is set to the output in Team 
where all these JSON files are being created. The, team, the application will then detect all these JSON files and build the UI based on that specific content. So what I can do now is just to say, okay, based on the JSON files that exist, which are these uh, staging or landing type uh, interfaces, I can select a pattern and map the metadata against the pattern, check the generate in database option and generate the views that will give me the delta between what is in the data warehouse and what is in the source. So this is one of the many types of interfacing from a source system to your data warehouse, certainly not the only one, but it's an example that can be used out of the box for these kinds of demonstrations and to try these patterns out yourself. What this does, this view only detects the delta. So if I go to the, to the database and not in the source database, but in the staging database, I can use these views and look at what delta would be detected if I were to run this ETL process right now. Of course, I haven't run it yet and my persistent staging database is still empty. So the next thing I need to do is to go and generate all these views similarly against the database. This particular template will pick up whatever delta is available in the landing and merge it into the persistent staging layer. And similarly, all the subsequent patterns about core business concept, natural business relationship, and context about these two, they will use the persistent staging data and, and go from there. So the first thing we need to do is to make sure that data is made available in the persistent staging area. And to do that, we can go back to the views we have created to select delta and then say, insert whatever you find in the view into a table. So this is where we switch from a virtual mode to more of a traditional ETL mode where we're going to apply a truncated insert, but we still use the object. We virtualize everything with in the first place. If I run this, I essentially trigger an ETL job that loads all the delta into the landing area using the view we've created before. So this means that at this point in time, there is some data in the landing. Now I need to commit this delta into the persistent staging area. And I can do that in a very similar way by insert into from the available delta. Now I've effectively committed this information in my persistent staging area table. And the next time I run the view that selects the delta, there will be no data left until I go and make changes in my in my information. So if I delete the record here and I update one here, if I run the view again, the delta mechanism, which is the view, will detect a change in the delete in this particular case. And again, if I want to commit that information to the different areas, all I need to do is to run the ETL again effectively. So now I've again used the views to simulate an ETL process. And the end result is that in my persistent staging table, I now have also deletes and inserts, which are, have been added over time. This is a simple example of having an, an interface that sort of mimics the change data capture into the, 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 the staging layer, so the, the landing area and the persistent staging of a data warehouse. But the real fun begins when we go into the persistent staging area and then simulate our information delivery into a target structure such as these. Right now, this information is made available as samples in uh, table samples in the, in the database. And I will load these now and later I will show that we actually don't need them anymore. 
and that is, is the power of, of virtualization and what it can do. For now though, I'm going to make sure that all these tables can be filled with data. And to do that, I'm going to go back to my persistent staging, which is now already loaded, and generate all the views that simulate the core business concept, that simulate the natural business relationship, and all the other elements that I want, all based on the, the metadata that was prepared by team earlier. Now, I've already created all these views to speed up the demo. And what this means is that while these tables, they're still empty, the views that simulate the information are already available in the persistent staging. So the physical table is still empty, but I can already look at what will be loaded if I were to run all these ETL process into these target tables. So my virtual data warehouse is right here, and I can look at the information I have, including the changes and deletes and everything that happens in the source. If I want to move from this virtual data warehouse into a real instantiated version of it, then I can use the same mechanism as I've used before, and I can switch from a view pattern to an insert pattern that uses the view to only add to the physical table what is not already added there. So when I run a core business concept insert, it will fire off this insert stack from the view with a left auto join to the target for where the key isn't available yet. For context tables such as satellites in this particular example, that information or that query is, is much more complex than, uh, than the hub, but it still only loads the changes between the view and the target table into this target table. So the view and the table will always be in sync and we can use either, but the ETL will take into account that any differences need to be reconciliated. So now I can see the information in the table similar or not similar the same as they are in the view. So I've moved from my, from my virtual data warehouse to my physical data warehouse. And this is quite interesting because we can use this as an incremental update or refresh into our system. But if I were to truncate this table again, and I would, for example, say delete from the, the hub, the next time I will run my ETL again from the metadata, this information will be back. So not only can I deterministically reproduce what happened, I can also use the same object to load the data warehouse in an incremental way. And this is the basic idea of the engine concept that I talk about from time to time, and it's what makes refactoring and redeployment of the data warehouse so easy. You can even go as far as saying, I don't need any of these tables anymore. And if I remove them, my integration layer is, for all intents and purposes, empty. But I still have the entire structure available as a virtual data warehouse, which is the schema on read on top of the persistent staging array. If we continue with that idea that we still have a virtual representation of this data warehouse, one of the interesting functions we can look into is how this works when we look at the information in a more time variant setting. So if we combine the multiple information components into a fuller view of what has happened across the board, a point in time table, a dimension, so delivery components such as that. As you can see, in selection area, I'm looking at the virtual representation. So this screen gives me the core business concepts that are available in the persistent staging as a representation of the data model I've designed. So if I select, for example, the hub customer, then it shows the corresponding tables 
that are directly related to this. And I'm going to use this as an example where I want to select only a couple of elements from a couple of tables. And using that view, or the series of views, in this case three views, I can generate a point in time query that I can run against the persistent staging. And it shows me those changes over time across these couple of tables, the, uh, including two time varying tables, two satellites, and see the difference in, in what happened for the specific customer, in this case, over time, right? So here this person changed his name to something different, less suitable for English speaking nations, and this information becomes available. Now to show that this works the way it's, uh, it's supposed to, if I go in and change it again, or maybe even better, I'm going to change the, the contact number to something. The way to push this information back into the source system is another run of my ETL process, my insert. I don't need to regenerate the views all the time because those views only need to change when the metadata changes, right? So every time when I run these insert scripts, it will effectively contribute to this persistent staging, this event log of everything that happened. And because my, my data warehouse is virtual, the point in time representation of that will then show you what has happened. In this case, a new change has been created. So first, I know nothing, the name, change of name, change of, in this case, contact number. So this is an example of how that all brought together in a time period view. But we can go further than that because ultimately we can make this as simple or complicated as we want to. So if I only am interested in a couple of elements which are specific to the customer in this case, I can create a view that only shows me some of the descriptive information about that, that customer. It looks a bit like a dimension. If I go back and unselect all those elements and are only interested in the timelines between those couple of tables, it gives me a, it gives me a different example which looks a bit more like a point in time table that I can use at different stages of the delivery to join context against. So the pattern for this is the same, but how we use it makes it look more like a dimension or more like a pit table. But it's a very fluid concept and it's very easy to refactor this into different use cases depending on the need. For me, the next work to do is to make sure that these patterns that are underpinning these points in time tables can be configured using the handlebars mechanisms that we use to drive the other templates and to make sure that we have the different flavors of managing perspectives of time and handling backdated adjustments or late arriving information, applying different levels of condensing or log compacting in these patterns and make it available in the same way we can use the base data warehouse instructions but that's for another session so thanks for having a look if you run into any problems let me know i'm happy to help and i hope you enjoyed this explanation the team and virtual data warehouse thank you